With news and more heavy rain and bad weather are hampering efforts to rescue tens of thousands of people stranded by flooding in northern India. At least a thousand people have been killed in Uttarakhand state. Land and mudslides have wiped out homes and villages. So Hale Rahman reports from Shakti Vihar. Digging her way out of disaster, trying to recover their personal items, seems pointless for Leela Devi and her family. Their home is like the others in the village, full of mud. 2,000 people here are facing the same loss and devastation. A week ago, the river burst its banks and submerged the village. It arrived with such force and speed, survivors still can't believe how they managed to escape. I have no clothes other than what I'm wearing. We ran from our beds, just like this, with nothing. I don't even have time to take in what's happened. I have no breadwinner in my family. I had a small tea shop, and now that's gone. Leila Devi invested her life savings into the purchase of this house. Having got a mortgage, she only took possession two months ago. They're calling it here their own Himalayan tsunami. They said the wall of mud was at least two meters high. This is the dugout kitchen of one home. They're recovering what they can. They weren't the only victims. Next to the village is a military cadet training center. It sits on the banks of the river, and this is all that's left. Yeah. And the building next the center's it. chief uh, shows me the new administrative building. building. Uh, the they moved building. in two months ago. It'll have to be demolished. So will all the adjacent structures. The damage runs into millions of dollars, but he's optimistic of re-establishing the academy in the future. We are planning to redesign it, how to make it secure, and we will start it. But of course it will take some time. It may take some time over one year or one and a half year, and we will come up and we'll make a proper another academy. <laughs> Medical staff from local hospitals and a regular feeding station is now operational at the village. This will be their home for the foreseeable future. The death toll is rising in the region, and while people are still being rescued, here they realize how lucky they are to survive. It's going to take weeks, if not months, for life to return to normal here. Everywhere you look, the houses are full of mud and the contents destroyed. All that the people can do is dig themselves out and hope that the government will offer them compensation in order for them to rebuild their lives and their homes. Sahil Rahman, Al Jazeera, Shakti Vihar, Uttarakhand. Now, Action Aid's Sejo Singh joins us now from New Delhi uh, via Skype. Ms. Singh, thank you very much for being with us uh, on the show. Now, we hear that rescue efforts have been suspended because of bad weather how how is that what you're hearing as well yes and we are fearing even worse weather now and uh, so we uh, actually are at a loss to about what to do uh, we are uh, also at a loss with uh, our partners who work in very remote areas and do ha have very little connectivity so with the few phone lines working we've got some idea about the number of villages uh, which have been completely wiped out in the areas that we work in and as uh, your report very rightly point out, points out that the poor who have survived have lost whatever little they have in their crops in their livestock and whatever little savings and their houses. Mr. Zhu, so, can I just interrupt you here? We're looking at pictures now of people being evacuated from the areas that have been um, affected. Now many of them are tourists. In fact, there are reports that locals have complained that priority for rescuing have been given to tourists and pilgrims. Can you confirm this? Absolutely. In fact, we are. Or we would also like to confirm that most of the media is also reporting ab about tourists and pilgrims. And in fact, if it hadn't been for that, maybe the area wouldn't have got the attention that it deserved. And the locals are absolutely right in saying that they are being ignored. And these are locals who are still vocal. We are also concerned about people who do not have a voice and also about the people who are not registered anywhere and i would like to point your attention to the fact of a large number of migrant laborers who migrate to the area in search of work in pilgrimage season and they are not recorded anywhere so when yeah so when the when when stock is taken and this will take months when the real picture would come out when the people who are not recorded 
will their loss would be Ms. concerned. Mr. Joe, there's also been criticism of the um, NGOs that have worked, that have been trying to coordinate uh, their efforts. Now, the Home Minister, Sushil Shinde, had said that there was a lack of coordination amongst agencies involved in relief operations. Can you confirm this as well? There's, there's definitely lack of coordination even between the government agencies themselves. And that is why Action Aid wants to restrict ourselves to areas where we have direct connection and direct coordination with the needs of the people that we didn't work with. So all our efforts will see direct fruition because we are connected with the people. And we uh, that's one part of our effort. The other part is to um, advocate very strongly and seize this moment to say that this is the price that we are paying for unbridled, unregulated development of power projects, of building, construction, and the cost is paid by the poor. In this time, it was pilgrims, uh, but mostly it is the poor who have to pay the cost for this, these huge natural devastations. And now coupled with what we think are extreme weather conditions and are likely to go under the climate change issues. Ms. Sejo, thank you very much for your insights there. Action Aid Senjo Singh speaking to us from New Delhi. Now let's uh, cross to the weather with Everton Fox. Everton, there are reports that rescue efforts in India have been suspended due to bad weather.